Hey everyone, welcome to our podcast series, Dare Insights. Today's episode is called Trading Up, an intern's journey to becoming uh, a trader. My name is Georgi Belinchev and I'm an associate trader on the Propane NAFTA desk at Dare. And today I will be sharing with you my journey from becoming an intern to becoming an associate trader. What inspired you to pursue a career in trading and how did you get started in the field? Well, I think I've always known I wanted to be a trader and I did my bachelor's at the University of Warwick uh, in economics and luckily I had the chance to get involved with the trading society there. Eventually became an executive and we were running all of these trading leagues where we trade against each other. Um, I found that quite fascinating and I was always interested in you know finance but trading seemed like the career for me because I was also very very competitive and the idea of having to compete with other traders and basically your job to become a job where you have to win every single day it was quite appealing to me um, so the obvious step for me was to um, look for internships or job opportunities and there at the time did their internship program so I was very interested I was lucky enough to um, get the internship there and that's kind of how my trading career started how did your educational background prepare you for a career in trading and what skills did you need to develop further? Um, I did my bachelor's in economics, uh, which was quite useful as all the macroeconomic lectures are actually quite applicable when it comes to oil trading. Um, I think some of the skills that I also use on a day-to-day -day basis are you know, statistics and um, statistical analysis. My course was quite heavy on econometrics and statistics. Um, and I think that's certainly helped me in, um, on the job. Um, some of the skills I certainly needed to develop further were some of the soft skills, which I think I underestimated. I did not expect communication to be as important as it is and probably the crucial skill for a very, very successful trader. But the communication and teamwork um, on a certain trading desk is really what makes uh, a trading desk um, great or mediocre um, and when I started uh, I think my communication as well as my teamwork uh, skills were somewhat subpar um, but as you get more experience and um, time on the job you do eventually improve and you get to that standard that there requires where communication has to be perfect at all times how did you find the dare intern program what were your key takeaways um, their intern program was absolutely amazing. Um, I think the first couple of weeks in particular were sort of like a dream because, well, you don't really get to do much work, but you get to reap all the benefits of an actual trader. So, you know, we basically play a lot of table tennis, uh, a lot of pool, and then we do a little bit of work here and there. So it was just great to be in that environment, observe all of these traders absolutely working their asses off while we're kind of there, but we're also, you know, really, really enjoying ourselves. But then towards the end of the internship, I'd say the last four weeks is when it was time to, you know, prove ourselves and prove that we actually won the job. So that's when we actually got put on desk and we were expected to add value on a desk, which I found was quite surprising given the little experience we had. But because there's so much pressure put on you to prove yourself, um, I think all of us, all of the interns really um, pushed themselves to, to the max and uh, really gave it their all to um, show their ambitions. And I think that my key takeaway is that, and I think what separates the DARE intern program from other internships is that people, uh, at DARE people do really expect you to have value while you're an intern. And that's how they test you, whether you're good enough for the job and you really do have to prove yourself. What was the most challenging part of transitioning from an intern to a trader and how did you overcome it? Um, I think because I'm, I came into the job directly from university and directly from the internship program, the most challenging bit was just getting used to the trader lifestyle. And the trader lifestyle sounds like a lot of fun, but really you're working long, long hours. And the one thing that you can't wait for is getting enough sleep. Um, so in the first couple of months, I was certainly struggling. My sleep was not good. Um, I struggled to go to bed because of, you know, how stressful the job was. 
Um, however, as you get more and more into the job, you start liking the job even more, becoming more and more addicted to it, trying to you know, be a successful trader. So at that point, you really start to value your sleep, your diet, your overall health, how much exercise you're doing, just so that you can be in that top-notch condition every single day when the market opens. What are some of the most important lessons you learned during your early days as a trader and how have they shaped your approach to trading today? Um, I think once you start the job as a, you know, as a trading analyst, um, you might get a bit of a surprise when you find out that you know, people are loud, people are shouting all day. And because it is so busy at all times, uh, you will receive feedback throughout the day and you, know, you might get shouted at. But the most crucial thing is there is never anything personal in you receiving bad feedback. Bad feedback basically must be given it there in order for us to improve. And I think once you start the job, you can kind of take it personally, which is what I did. Um, but that's just not the way to go. The way to go is if it's busy, you make a mistake and you get shouted for it. You make a note of it, you know, you find out what you did wrong and then you try and not make it ever again. I think one of the moments that I remember most profoundly was when I was on the um, few oil desk and I had some, you know, bad feedback to give to me. And at that point I kind of took it a bit personally, but obviously there was nothing personal in that. So when I actually looked back, I thought, well, I actually did make a mistake that could have easily been avoided. I'm much better than that. So going forward, receiving bad feedback is actually a great thing because you only get to improve. And I think being in that mindset is one of the most important qualities that a trader can have. How do you stay up to date with the latest trends and developments in the markets you trade in? Um, well, I think every single trader out there certainly uh, lives and breeds whatever product they trade. And you do that by being in the market at all times. So you'd spend, you know, 15 hours a day just observing the market, all the moves and prices, all the developments. You find out, you know, which people are buyers, which pe people are sellers, how the curve is shaped and how, you know, it moves throughout the day and what, what's causing that. And that helps you pre-position for, you know, any trades that you might do. Whenever there's a big news story out, we immediately are the first ones to get it. We know what effects that might have on the prices of, and then we just try and stay more nimble when it comes to trading if the market is too volatile. What is blottering and why is this task so crucial to the desk? Um, blottering is basically the input of trades that you do. So once you do a trade, you have to input it into the system so that you can read what risk you're running and what positions you're running, how much you need to hedge, um, and just have a view of what your position is, basically. Um, and it is quite a crucial task, certainly in most uh, markets, mainly because uh, on my desk, for example, we do a lot, a lot of over-the-counter trades, so OTC voice broker trades, and these have to be blottered, basically put into the system so that we can know what our risk looks like, so that we know what we need to hedge, how much we need to hedge, recycle this risk, move this risk around basically around the books. It is an essential task to be really good at blottering because it does get extremely busy from two to four. So there's points in the day where, you know, one trader might do 10 trades in roughly 45 seconds. And these trades are very, very specific. So you can't really mess up any of the details because that affects the position that you're running. So it is quite essential to be a good blotter because otherwise you end up in scenarios where you have the wrong position on and you're trading against the wrong position or you're running um, Delta or basically you haven't hedged your position correctly and that obviously loses you money. So that makes blottering quite an essential task and very much linked to um, the amount of money you can make. What advice would you give to graduates who are interested in, in pursuing a career in trading? Um, I think for graduates, it's extremely important to determine whether you actually want to be a trader. I think for me, I'll give you this example. I knew I was going to be a trader. Um, I did not pursue any other opportunities. A lot of people at my university were interested in you know, banking or um, consulting, whereas I stayed on the singular path of 
only trade. That's all I ever wanted to do. And I think that if you figure that out, then I can't really give you an advice because if you're determined and you're sure that trading is the only career for you, then I don't think anything's really going to stop you from becoming a trader. I think eventually you will find an opportunity in whatever company to um, trade and prove yourself. How do you balance your personal life and your career as a trader? And what steps do you take to maintain a healthy work-life balance? Well, to be honest, balancing your trading career with your personal life is very, very challenging. Mostly because as a trader, you have to stay on top of your job at all times. And that means apart from the 15 hours you're working a day or sometimes even more, you find yourself thinking about the market even after you go home and after you switch off completely. So getting that ability to, when you get home, not think about the market is actually something that's quite useful because that way you recover better. And then when you go to work tomorrow, you're just 100% instead of losing sleep and not being 100%. I think for me, um, the first couple of months after I started as a graduate trading analyst were quite difficult, mostly because I couldn't really find a separation between my trading life and my personal life. It was more like, it was more like my trading life was my number one focus. Uh, and that was quite taxing on me, I, I think, mostly because I just couldn't recover as well. But as you gain more and more experience and there are really supports you with this, you start paying a lot more attention to working out, your diet, your sleep, um, your relationships um, and you also try and um, kind of spend the weekends the best way you can mostly because you don't work on weekends all the markets are closed and we truly get to enjoy them thank you everyone for tuning into their insights my name is Georgi Belinchev and I hope that some of my stories today have inspired you uh, to also pursue a career in trading I think that trading life is certainly a road that is quite tough but it is also quite fulfilling and rewarding uh, to be on the other side. I do think that if you're determined, driven and focused on becoming a trader, then we certainly have a place for you there.